Steph Curry continues to inspire Bob Myers. Recently, Warriors general manager Bob Myers and former Warriors forwards Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson appeared on the podcast All the Smoke to talk about what makes Curry unique among NBA stars. What are these distinguishing characteristics? How do they get Curry to step up and take the lead? Stay tuned for more information on the subject. Keep an eye out. To begin, Steph Curry continues to wow Bob Myers as cheat code for the Warriors. On the latest episode of All the Smoke, the Warriors general manager spoke with former former Warriors forwards Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson about what distinguishes Curry from other stars. The main reason has been Curry's stability, Myers explained to Barnes and Jackson. Myers told Barnes and Jackson what it was like to have Curry in the organization while discussing Curry's calm demeanor with the former Warriors players. If you guys were the GM and you had him, it's almost like a cheat code, and it's your responsibility not to screw it up, Myers explained. Do not jeopardize his career. Myers points out that while some observers may believe it's easy to keep a player with Curry's talent on the path to superstardom. The Warriors general manager says it's anything but. Myers also stated that seeing Curry hoist his fourth NBA championship trophy and win his first finals MVP was a great feeling, especially given Curry's history of criticism. It answered all of the questions people were asking about this guy. And I believe you saw him feel the way he did because he was like, can you leave me alone? Is this sufficient? Have I gone far enough? Myers finished. Before winning his fourth championship in eight seasons, some pundits and fans tended to put an asterisk next to Curry's name for various reasons including having Kevin Durant as a teammate for three seasons. On the other hand, Curry has silenced any doubters by winning championships both with and without Durant. Moving on, Myers believes speech shows Dre still has Dubs leader equity. Following an 11-point loss to the Phoenix Suns, the Warriors entered last Friday's game against the New York Knicks with a 6-9 record. On the road, the team was winless and desperately needed a spark. A team meeting on the morning of the Knicks game, spearheaded and led by veteran forward Draymond Green, provided the Warriors with the motivation they needed to defeat New York 111-101 to and embark on a two-game road trip with momentum on their side. I spoke with Draymond the day before, and he said he was going to talk to the team. Warriors president of basketball operations and general manager Bob Myers said on 95.7 The Game's Steiny and Guru Show Tuesday, Green felt it was time to speak up after the defending NBA champions didn't get off to the start they wanted or expected. Myers said Green had earned that right, despite the controversy surrounding him. Every game, you're either feeling good or bad based on winning or losing, Myers explained, but there's a bigger picture to it. If you're in the building, sometimes you can sense a time, and I think Draymond's been around the block long enough to know when that time should be. He thought it was the right time because it's a pretty unique team in terms of guys who have been through a lot. I believe he spoke briefly. The important thing is not what I think, but how the players receive it, and if they say it was effective, then it was. Following that, what are Thompson's thoughts on Green's decision? The Warriors responded to Green's speech, particularly Clay Thompson. Thompson's efficiency against the Knicks played a key role in that win, partly thanks to Green's wisdom during the team meeting. Thompson described the exchange as a great conversation after the game, revealing Green reminded him to trust his teammates and be patient with his shot. Very productive meeting, Thompson said, and Draymond held the floor. He's a fantastic motivator. We all responded admirably. I'm just looking forward to beginning a new winning streak. Thompson scored 41 points, including 10 three-pointers, in the Warriors' 127-120 victory over the Houston Rockets in their first road victory. Clay Thompson hanging and banking it home. Clay has 20. In Meyer's opinion, Thompson's quick turnaround following Green's speech demonstrated that the defensive anchor's voice still carries weight in the locker room, despite past events. You'd have to ask each person what they thought, but I'd say that certainly, based on what Clay has done since, the fact that he looks like he responded would bode well, Myers said. And I'm sure Green wasn't the only person who told Clay to keep it simple and not force it. However, for whatever reason, this one landed in such a way that it showed on the court. So he acknowledged it and is reaping the benefits of it. That's a good thing. Next up, Green still has equity as a leader. The Warriors, as Myers previously stated, are a distinct group. With plenty of ups and downs along the way, their core of Thompson, Green, and Steph Curry has won four NBA championships in the last eight seasons. However, one of the lowest points came in early October due to Green's actions toward Poole. But while the NBA world wonders what impact the incident has had on the Warriors' locker room since, especially after their slow start to the season, last week's meeting was unquestionably a step forward for both Green and the team. As far as Draymond's standing as a leader, I think he understands that based on what happened, you can't just walk right back into the room and assume that, Myers said. People on the team are tired of the way they're playing, and I'm sure the coaches are tired, and I believe Draymond thought, I'm going to say something. And he has a lot of equity in that room because of what he's done. Certainly, 
I don't think he's proud of what he did that day when he punched pool, but he's done a lot of good, and he's spoken to the team a lot of times, and they've responded. As the Warriors prepare to defend their NBA title, there's a chance they'll look back on Friday's crucial team meeting as a watershed moment, and they'll have a locker room full of leaders, including Green, to help them get there. Moving on, Colts' Stephen Gilmore continues playing at an elite level. Through the first 11 games of the 2022 season, Indianapolis Colts cornerback Stephen Gilmore has established himself as a leading candidate for the team's most valuable player award. The veteran cornerback has not demonstrated any signs of decline and continues to be a tremendously impactful player for the Colts in the secondary. The Colts' chances of making the playoffs have been kept alive thanks largely to his multiple interceptions of potentially game-winning passes. And according to CBS Sports, he's the cornerback who's allowed the fewest passing touchdowns despite facing the most targets in primary coverage. Although there's some ambiguity regarding what constitutes primary coverage, this is just one more reason general manager Chris Ballard made one of the smartest offseason moves by signing Stephen Gilmore. Gilmore has reportedly been responsible for a 59.3 completion rate in coverage and a 75.6 passer rating this season, as stated by Pro Football Focus. These numbers rank among the top 10 for cornerbacks who have faced at least 50 targets. Even though the offense has had a difficult season, the defense has been a shining light for the team this year. The struggles of the offense have been the more dominant narrative. In addition, the presence of Gilmore has been a contributing factor to the defensive improvement that has taken place. The veteran has been a significant upgrade in the secondary, and he'll now continue that role on Monday night against a formidable combination consisting of Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. Finally, Spurs' Zach Collins ejected after a hard foul that drew blood on Russell Westbrook. Zach Collins of the San Antonio Spurs was ejected from Saturday night's 143-138 loss to the Los Angeles Lakers after striking Russell Westbrook in the head, drawing blood, and causing a brief altercation in the lane at the AT&T Center. Collins blocked Westbrook at the rim late in the third quarter and struck him in the head, knocking Westbrook to the ground. Westbrook then leaped to his feet and charged at Collins. However, before he could do much, LeBron James grabbed Westbrook and held him back. Westbrook walked back toward the Lakers bench, blood streaming down his face. Collins was ejected after being charged with a flagrant two foul. Westbrook was called for a technical foul before exiting the game after shooting free throws for the locker room. Collins finished his 19-minute stint on the bench with 12 points and 8 rebounds. On the other hand, Westbrook returned to the bench from the locker room and entered the game again. The team determined that the cut on his head did not require stitches. In 27 minutes, he finished with 11 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. James led the Lakers with 39 points and 11 rebounds in the win while shooting 7 of 12 from beyond the arc. The Lakers' fifth win in six games was their second straight over San Antonio. What are your thoughts on our video? Do you think Steph Curry is the cheat code of the Warriors as Myers believes? What about Green? Does your opinion align with Myers that he still has equity? Please let us know on the comment section below. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. And thanks for watching.